ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Happy holidays <laughs> to everybody here. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the podcast, special holiday edition. Jingle, 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 jingle. <laughs> and for another week of the podcast, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalt. And so our topic for this edition, if you might have guessed it... <laughs> Is holiday movies and how much we love them. And uh, we apologize because this is actually the last episode of the year. We meant to release our year-end review after this episode, but it accidentally got published before we meant to. They don't know so, that. <laughs> so uh, if you listen to that episode before this one and we talk about how, hey, we'll see you in 2019. Well, this is now actually for real, our last episode of 2018. So, so. I looked at the stats and there was one download of that episode. What? Really? So I think that was you. That was, no, there, no, I think there's more than that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Daltz is in the festive spirit, not the festivist spirit, but the the festive spirit. This is the high budget uh, <laughs> sound effects that we have gathered here today for this particular episode. He went and grabbed a stocking from the pellet stove that has a jingle bell attached to it that my dog went crazy and tried to attack the other day because apparently she's never seen a jingle bell in her life, even though she's a million years old. So when we do the video portion of this podcast, you'll be able to see the fact that I went and grabbed the tree first and brought it over and, <laughs> sh- and shook it. But it didn't make any appreciable sound, so I had to go back and get the stocking with the the dealio on it. What do you call these things? Jingle bells. That's a jingle bell? Is that actually what they call it? Uh, Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Speaking of 2019, we will be video broadcasting the podcast. Oh, you're going on the record about that? Yeah, I'm going to go on the record. I'm going to hold our feet to the fire on this. We're going to get a webcam, and we're going to set it up over in the corner of our dining room, and you can see how... I'm in my robe right now, and Daltz <laughs> is in like a t-shirt and sweatpants, and it's a really high budget affair. So if you want to, you can you can listen to us on your uh, podcast app, or you can watch us on YouTube, sitting here drinking our festive beverages. Right, the eggnog galore yeah. that we have usually. I think we're going to have to change the wardrobe budget for the show, though, if uh, we are going to start videotaping it or whatever they call it these days, video recording it. I'm going to have to start wearing makeup, so I know you're going to no, like that. No, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, be it's HD. a good HD. example for the youth of today. If it's HD, then you can't be seeing like my zits and dark makeup circles. makeup industry is nasty <laughs> in so many ways. You know so what else some... is nasty? Christmas. <laughs> Not just playing. Segway. <laughs> That's Coco's way of saying, get off my back about the makeup. <laughs> No, that's just me saying I think we've already spent five minutes not talking about Christmas <laughs> not movies. Not talking about so Christmas, right. Maybe we need to start talking about holiday movies. Holiday movies. Let's talk about them. Yes. So how many Thanksgiving movies are there? Or are we just talking about Christmas movies? I think we're just talking about Christmas okay. movies. Okay. <laughs> so there's not like a Flag Day movie or something like that. I think there is. Because isn't there like a Mike Nichols or whoever did like a Valentine's Day and I think, New Year's Eve? And I think there might be like an Arbor Day movie out now or something. I'm going to go out like on a limb and say every superhero movie is a Flag Day movie because at the end of the movie they all stand there looking at the wind with the flag blowing in the distance behind them you're right so every avengers movie is a flag day movie oh okay so yeah they're patriots so we need like a we need like a president's day movie well we watched lincoln so that might be a president's day movie oh yeah that's true um so 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 it's christmas movies it's not holiday movies okay so just for my point of clarification okay i didn't want to go on the wrong track. I did all this research on <laughs> on Barvitzba movies and <laughs> Boxing Day movies. That would be awesome. <laughs> so the reason we decided to do this podcast is because we watched the new Netflix release, The Christmas Chronicles, with Kurt Russell, who we have done a podcast on before, wondering why he's not a bigger star than he is. We are big, big fans of the Kurt Russell. Especially Escape from New York. Especially Escape from St. Louis. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, scroll back in your podcast feed and find that episode if you haven't listened to it for background on Kurt Russell. And there's a very good chance you have not listened to it. (laughs) (laughs) Because we see our download numbers. (laughs) So what did you think of the Christmas Chronicles, Dalt? I thought it was not very good. Aw. Yeah. Why, Why is that? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. The Christmas movie is very trite and usually formulaic in its approach. 
Uh, Santa or a Santa-like figure comes under some sort of crisis and is unable to enjoy Christmas or celebrate Christmas or bring the presents to the kids. Mm -hmm. Therefore, some sort of proxy for Santa is either involved or somebody is uh, uh, volunteered to get involved and help out Santa or the Santa proxy Mm -hmm. to save the day. And at the end of the day, Christmas is saved, everybody's happy, the end. That's a lot of Christmas movies right there that I just uh, summarized. Mm-hmm. This movie was not any different from that. Kurt Russell plays, uh, uh, I guess, a hipper Santa Claus, you would say. <laughs> With a Farrah wig. With a Farrah wig and actually a Farrah beard, too, by the, by the <laughs> looks of it. It was a pretty... It was pretty fluffy. And it was actually kind of homelessly. Homeless-y. Oh, you think so? Yeah, it, oh, it looked okay. like it had, like... Food items in it. Oh goodness! Um, well, Santa does eat a lot of cookies on Christmas Eve, so which is why he's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I was not too crazy about the movie. I I went into it with an open mind and open heart because I know you wanted to see it, and because I have children, and I was screening it for them. We we did try to get them to watch it, and they were uninterested. They were too interested in their phones <laughs> and their devices to look up and even acknowledge that we were in the room. <laughs> Christmas is it? Christmas? What's that? Let me. Where's my presents? Let me look on Instagram and see what that is. So uh, not that you're bitter. <laughs> not that I'm bitter. Um, not that I'm any different from any parent these days. Yeah. On the phone situation. So uh, yes, I was not a big fan of it. I like Kurt Russell. I thought mm-hmm. he was good in it. I thought he did the best he could with the material he was presented. But and we didn't actually explain the plot. I didn't exactly explain the plot. Well, you, you wanna... just basically explained the plot. Uh... Yeah, Santa, these two kids stow away on Santa's sleigh, and then they cause the sleigh to crash, and the whole movie is kind of convoluted. They have to get the elves to rebuild the sleigh, and they have to find the reindeer, and they end up in a chop shop in Chicago, <laughs> and it's and Santa's in jail. And I will say probably the best thing about that movie was Kurt Russell's performance. He was just enjoying the hell out of oh, himself. Yeah. And yeah, he was good. He's always I, good. Yeah, he's always good. I was vaguely disappointed because Santa's in jail with, like, hookers and drug addicts and Steve Van Zandt, who right. somehow made Randomly. an Randomly. Yeah, and so they do, like, a kind of jailhouse rock scene where Santa makes, like, drum kits materialize. Which was and... completely random. Yeah, and I was very disappointed if they were going to go the jailhouse rock route that they didn't sing a Blue Christmas by Elvis. Yeah. I, I was waiting for that, and it didn't It didn't happen. But... So it was, like, one of those movies that you try to figure out if it needs to be, like, a little bit farcical or if it's just being cute or what it is. Mm. And so when they went and they, they did the musical scene in the, in the, in the jail, randomly in the middle, randomly like, in the middle. Yeah. And then they go to a different scene. I was thinking they would come back and Santa would be like out, but no, he was still singing. <laughs> he was still going. They were still playing. So I guess the, the, you know, we got the music musicians on the contract and they're expensive. We might as well right. use them for the full scene. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's Steve Van Zandt. Come on. It was Steve Van Zandt who looks like he's, uh, not in game shape, let's say. He was wearing a Travolta wig, for sure. He was like, wearing a wig. and lots, was, of, lots of wigs in this movie. I think that he, maybe he was auditioning for the role of Santa and failed to get there. And what I don't understand is, so uh, Kimberly Williams Paisley played the mother of the two kids who stowed away on Santa's sleigh. Her husband is Brad Paisley, country star. Oh, wow. Why don't you get Brad Paisley to be one of the musicians in the jailhouse rock scene? Oh. Like, I didn't bring that up during the... Uh, during our critique of it while we were watching, but I mean that would be that would I had be no perfect. Idea. Yeah, I had so. no idea there was that connection. Yeah, so. and we did, but we did see the Goldie Hawn Kurt Russell connection throughout that movie. That's that's true. Goldie, please lay off the fillers. You're <laughs> you're a beautiful woman. I I know I was, you're getting up there in Hollywood years, but you don't need them. You're beautiful. Stop. I was it. disappointed to see how she looks now. Yeah. Um, so the highlight of that movie for me yes. was picking out scenes uh, in Toronto that I knew were. Oh, yeah. streets and things like that that I'd been on because the whole movie was filmed in Toronto and then of course it stands in for Chicago and Boston and mm-hmm. other points uh, around the world um, so that was the big moment for me really and that shows you the level of commitment that I had <laughs> to the plot and to the characters <laughs> yeah um, yeah I don't I guess the jailhouse rock scene was probably the best one for me the, the chop shop scene was kind of weird and yeah that was random the elves didn't look like 
any elf depiction I think I've ever seen. I wasn't expecting them to be like the troll dolls from the 80s, but that's kind of what they, they, did, they looked like. Like they were very strange. So. And there was some, uh, there was a, a bit of savagery to that one guy with the chainsaw, the one elf. Yeah. I thought elves were like friendly, happy people, always yeah. building toys. I mean, that's what uh, Will Ferrell was like in Elf. Right. So. This is the kind of, and all the elves that were around him were all very yeah. friendly and happy. And Except for Bob Newhart, who was like bitter and jaded. But, <laughs> but he was playing Bob Newhart. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, he, he, he's got one shtick. So, yeah, I guess uh, maybe my favorite part might have been uh, right when they first crash landed in Chicago. They went into Nick's place. Which, Chicago in air quotes. Yeah, yeah. Toronto slash Chicago. They went into a bar uh, trying to raise money to get like a cab to go somewhere. I don't even remember where. And So um, you were deep into the plot, too. Yeah. And the bar was called Nick's Place. And I thought that was a cute callback to uh, It's a Wonderful Life. When George Bailey goes to whatever the heck the name of his town is, like if he hadn't have been born. Pleasantville or? Yeah, something like that. Potterville? Um, no, well, it's Potterville in the alternate reality, but I oh. can't. Bedford Falls, that's it. Look at you. And uh, the name of the bar in Bedford Falls is Martinis, but in Potterville, in the non George Bailey born universe, it's uh, Nick's. So I thought that was like a handy little. Like, ah, oh, we're paying homage to one of the most famous Christmas movies around. Maybe so. that was just an admission of guilt that they've stolen from all the other movies because the plot was just another <laughs> Santa Claus in trouble or, or Christmas is in trouble movie. Yeah. So. Um, so clearly the best thing about that movie was Kurt Russell just hamming it up and yeah. The best line that he had was when he said fake news about... <laughs> That's right. Santa doesn't eat cookies or yeah, something like that. Some, yeah, some stereotype about Santa. I, mean, I guess we have to now be, you know... Careful of our stereotypes about Santa too. Like that's right. You know, you got to be sensitive to these sorts of things these mm. days. You got to be aware of other people's challenges and, right. and and opportunities. Well, speaking of, I felt uh, speaking of challenges, I felt really bad for Kimberly Williams Paisley because she had to. She's a nurse, and she had to work overnight on Christmas Eve. So that's why the kids were alone. And she came back on Christmas morning and. There's all these presents under the tree that Santa left there, and none of the presents was for her. <laughs> they were just all for the kids, and she's just sitting there watching the kids open the presents, and then the boy opens a present that doesn't say, like, from mom or from Santa or whatever, and she's like, oh, who's that from? And I'm like, really, mom? Like, you're not going to be freaked out? Like, um, who left a present for you under the tree <laughs> that I don't know about? Like, it was... Well, I think of... that we're supposed to suspend a little bit of disbelief because it is a movie about Santa. Yeah, that will. About a man who <laughs> flies with reindeers. <laughs> and is fat-ish, but goes down chimney Chimneys and, in a magical yeah. poof. I like yeah. the way they did that, actually. The special effect around that yeah. was good. Yeah, that there was, was some good. good CGI there. You talked about the, uh, the elves. They were heavy duty on the CGI, but they were mm. a little bit on the creepy side. Um, so yeah, I, uh, you know what else, you know what else I thought was uh, strange is like Santa has like an old school library card catalog, right? It's full of like every letter he's ever got, ever gotten or whatever. I'm like, is Santa really still going to do that? Or is he going to be computerized these days? Well, especially considering the, uh, sleigh had some sort of magical turbocharger time warp thingy. Yeah. Like the Harry Potter, uh. Right. Yeah, thing where you can, yeah. And and it also, the bag was like a magical portal to the North Pole. Right. So that's why it's a never-ending bag of presents instead of him actually physically having to carry every single present in the sleigh. Like, well, I was expecting, so maybe there's a paradox there. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Santa is a complicated man and we're supposed to think that he has a... a a longing for some of the older ways that that we That's have true. lost. Yeah. That we're not as connected as we used to be. So maybe there's a lot of symbolism there That's in the true. cards. And also mm -hmm. he spoke a language that I was not familiar with. Was it some Finnish kind of, or Norwegian? Nor or yeah, I think it yeah, Scandinavian? I didn't think the elves were not English speakers, which is probably me as like an Anglo centric like worldview going on. But So I think that this was also a comment on our times on how we should be more inclusive and understanding. Immigrants and... taking our jobs. Right. There we go. That's... <laughs> MAGA. Immigrants are There's taking a... our jobs. Right there. Okay, people, you thought this was just a Christmas movie. <laughs> this movie was a comment on our times. Right. <laughs> oh, and I would also like to say I did enjoy the performance of the two Chicago cops who arrested Santa. I oh, thought, you did? I thought they did a good job. So that's another factor that we... During the streets... Uh... <laughs> 
street scenes of <laughs> Chicago where there's many car chases and reindeer chases and sleigh chases, there was not a soul on the street other than the people who were acting. Right. So there weren't any cars driving by, there were no people walking by, and yet it was supposed to be Chicago. Yeah, I think uh, Lakeshore Drive at late at night is still probably going to have a lot of cars on it. Like maybe like 1130 or 1230 or something like yeah, that. Like but it, it was not too late. This is more disbelief suspension happening. Well, there's disbelief suspension happening. And then there's also just like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like downtown Chicago is going to be this deserted. On New um, Year, on Christmas Eve. Right. Yeah. So. so you mentioned It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. So that's a movie that is a good Christmas movie. I think without actually being a Christmas movie. Without and that's why I think it's a good Christmas movie mm-hmm. is because the plot is sort of like the sliding doors yeah aspect uh-huh. is like what happens if I didn't live or what happens if I if something else happened and I took a left turn instead of a right turn right. what what happens if I missed that bus what mm-hmm. happens if I I made that train that kind of thing so mm-hmm. that's why I like that movie it's cheesy and and every time you hear this an angel gets her wings, uh, whatever. But I think that the uh, the plot there was good. So it was a good Christmas movie. Are there any other movies out there that you've seen that are good movies that happen to take place during Christmas or or vice versa? Oh, goodness. Um, well, now you've... Well, I think the elephant in the oh. room. <laughs> well, I was thinking actual like elf or a Christmas story. But my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Die Hard. Um, I should say the elf in the room. The elf in the room. There we go. The uh, 500-pound sack of presents in the room is. (laughs) Yeah, I freaking love Die Hard. If you say it's not a Christmas movie, you can bite me because that is a Christmas (laughs) movie. It takes place on Christmas Eve. It takes place at a Christmas party at Nakatomi Plaza. It's it's awesome. So why is that a Christmas movie? Because it takes place on Christmas Eve. And but it has nothing to do with Christmas. It just happens to be like, what happens if it had taken place on Flag Day? <laughs> and they had flags and they were having a Flag Day party. <laughs> well, then it would be an awesome Flag Day movie. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, no, it's, it, I, how can you not like it? It's No, I, 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 I think it's a great movie. I'm just questioning whether it's a Christmas movie. Well, then you know. talk, because I know I read somewhere where one of the creators said that uh, it actually is a Christmas movie, so but you, did, you talk. Were there subsequent movies that were set during Christmas? Like, is it set on Christmas every year for the I think, sequels? I think Die Hard 2 is on Christmas, and then I think after that they gave up the ghost. After that they said, we can't make the movies, the same movie over and over again. Even though they, every time. they do. Yeah. Even though that's what a sequel is. And that spawned a whole lot of movies, too, because Speed... Like, die hard on a bus. Like, right, right. <laughs> Air Force One, die hard on a plane. On a plane. Like, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so you talk while I look up. Christmas. Well, so uh, I think my favorite Christmas movie, at least in recent memory, has got to be Elf. Because uh, Will Ferrell's performance is outstanding. He mm-hmm. is an elf. <laughs> and uh, my daughters have seen it a couple of times. And they think it's pretty funny. And it's everything I can do sometimes to keep them from eating spaghetti with maple syrup on top of it Ew. and and <laughs> and like those cheesy uh lucky charms and things like that and he, he puts on in the, in the one scene so so there are very very few uh movies that are like that when you have uh, an interesting character and he just takes it off the hook and goes in extreme directions and it actually works mm-hmm. but i think will ferrell was he was elf in that movie yeah and, he- and he's that's sort of him That's how I think of him, is that character, is like Elf, you know, like this goofy, you know, wide-eyed, innocent kind of comedian who is not Ricky Bobby or is not uh, Ron Burgundy, but he's more like Elf. Like, I don't think he's Ron Burgundy. I think he's going around going, Scotch, Scotch, Scotch. (laughs) Now that's what you do. Or being in a, yes, or being in a glass cage of emotion or anything like that. I don't think that's... Will Ferrell. I think Elf is truer to who Will Ferrell is. Are we going to watch uh, Elf this year with the kids and your mom? Yeah, probably. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think we should. Okay, so here is a, a Christmas movie or not checklist. Die Hard takes place entirely during the Christmas holiday. The setting is entirely at a Christmas party. It plays three Christmas songs. Uh, yeah, there we go. Whereas White Christmas, only the final reel takes place during the Christmas holiday. The final reel only is the setting for the Christmas party, and it only plays two Christmas songs. So there you go. Christmas movie. But Christmas is in the mo- in the title, the movie title. Well, I 
you're not going to say die Christmas or Christmas hard. I mean, that's <laughs> Christmas hard. Christmas hard. That's like a porn movie. That's not. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so that, so the, the, the uh, site that you're citing, WashingtonPost.com. No way. No way. <laughs> Die Hard versus White Christmas. White Christmas. <laughs> this is the hard hitting journalism that we're trying to shut down in today's society. And, I uh, and apparently the uh, book that Die Hard was based on is much more Christmassy than the movie. Uh, one of the producers. Said. Wait, wait a minute. Die Hard is based on a book. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I remember reading that um, in the book, John McClane is actually saving his daughter, not his wife, and like there's some other stuff like that. But yeah, according to uh, the producer. The book, which was published in 79, is much more Christmassy than the movie. Wow. Because it uses the holiday to underscore the hero's fall from grace. Ooh. 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 Talk about symbolism. Yeah. Mm. So. so that's impressive. Yeah. I still don't really think it's a Christmas movie, but I don't want to bite you. So, um, <laughs> Don't you, though? <laughs> not as far as the listeners are concerned. <laughs> But uh, so other Christmas movies, have you seen a lot of Christmas movies in your life or? <laughs> well, that's an opening. <laughs> um, Here's the, here, if I had a sound effect for a door, it would be like. <laughs> like at the beginning of the uh, Thriller song. Like, that's exactly what I had in mind. Although that's Halloween and not Christmas. So um, yeah, Halloween movies. That, that's not really oh, a yeah. holiday, though. So I guess that's not really a. No, don't you even go there. You know, I love Halloween. Yeah, so. but you don't get it off school or work or anything like that. I know, so it's that's not a true. holiday. That sucks. Um, yeah, it does. So I haven't um, seen a whole lot of Christmas movies in my life, which probably explains why Die Hard is my favorite Christmas movie, <laughs> because we are going to delve into Coco's childhood now. Oh, so, uh, I wish I had different sound effects for that. <laughs> <laughs> or considering we're talking about my mom, it could be like the psycho, like, <laughs> wee, 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 wee. yeah, so <laughs> hopefully she's not listening. <laughs> she, she probably still has a flip phone. So um, <laughs> yeah, so my mom was actually literally in a cult. When I was a child, literally? literally in a cult, it is qualified by the uh, government as a cult. And even though it's, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, they didn't celebrate Christmas or Easter. So it was this weird. No Easter movies either. Yeah, so no Easter way. movies Easter either. So it was this weird kind of, but it did celebrate stuff like Passover. So it was this weird kind of Christianity Judaism hybrid. Is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. She's yeah. still in it. Um, she left it for a long time when they told her that um, she was like going to hell for divorcing my dad. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's why she left it actually. Um, Sounds very open minded. Yeah. So yeah. So that's why when I was a kid, I was not allowed to watch Christmas movies because those are pagan. So I never saw. I saw It's a Wonderful Life because that's not really a Christmas movie. And I was allowed to watch Die Hard because that's not a Christmas movie. Even though I was like 11 when that came out. So I think that was kind of inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but I never saw like Rudolph or anything. Or Frosty. Or Frosty or... or any of that stuff until probably about five years ago. And by that point, like I was cynical and jaded. And I was like, this is awful. So I don't. And you don't have kids. So you don't, right. have, you and don't I don't have... accidentally see one. Right. Like I was for some reason allowed to watch like a Charlie Brown Christmas and like oh, see, the, now that's a good Yeah, Christmas that's a really movie. good one. Yeah. And I, I got to see, like, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So I think Charlie Brown generally was acceptable for mm-hmm. my mom for some reason, but other holiday-themed cartoons were not. So, yeah, so I watch Frosty now, and I'm like, yeah, this is not good because I don't have those fond childhood memories right. and nostalgia. So that's You don't why, associate your childhood with that show. Right, so that's why our um, the lights on our Christmas tree aren't working right now and Daltz's head is exploding about it. And I'm like, just <laughs> take the tree down. It's fine. We don't need a tree. Come on, you know? Like, Because I don't care about Christmas because I never had it when I was a kid. Well, that's why I was stunned and surprised when I got angry and I said I was going to light the Christmas tree on fire and throw it off the deck. <laughs> and then you you didn't object. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. It'll land in the snow and, it'll, and the fire will go out. Just <laughs> right. like the oven mitt that we, we had at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, that's... Which a- is another story. That's Entirely. a whole different podcast. Yeah. Uh, well, but, if you subscribe to uh, our uh, face to Facebook page, then yes. maybe you'll get a sense of that. <laughs> oh, so what? If the bell rings, does an angel get her wings, or is there like, is it last call, or what does it really mean? I don't. I don't know. I I never gave too much thought to it, actually. What do you think? Well, th- we got to come up with something. Well, I could go get some more wine, but it's only like eleven thirty, so. <laughs> I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere. Her, oh, her, yeah. Ha, her. Yeah. So that's why my favorite Christmas movies are Die Hard and Elf. And I do like a Christmas story. I did finally just see it a few years ago, which for the I've first never time seen. Too. I think I think the girls would like it. 
Like, I so think we should watch it with your girls and your mom. Maybe I'll do that. It's always intimidated me because as a young lad, mm-hmm. young strapping lad in, in, in Ontario, in Ontario, and where it's cold in the winter, uh-huh. I always was worried about the whole tongue on the post thing <laughs> because that was something that that was something that they told us in school: don't put your tongue on anything metal and cold. And mm-hmm. there, I know there, there were some people who were dared to do it and might have done it. Uh, I never did it, and I didn't even consider it. I was always worried about you know sticking on to a a pole by the swings in my public school and then having my mom have to come with boiling water and remove me in the middle of the night. Well, speaking of uh, not having a uh, childish sense of wonder about Christmas things, uh, should we talk about Baby It's Cold Outside? Baby It's Cold Outside. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so there's a radio station in Cleveland that has stopped playing Baby It's Cold Outside because the lyrics are indicative of a man not taking no for an answer. And now there's a big brouhaha over that. You see it freaking all over Facebook and everything. People are like, no, this is a classic. Stop being so sensitive. But so this is another song. Um, we weren't allowed to listen to Christmas music either. Oh, yeah. So what did you have a Christmas tree? No, we didn't have any of that. We didn't decorate. I didn't get to do the Christmas. So what'd you do on Christmas school? Day? Nothing. You just huh. woke up and yeah. had a coffee and some smokes and yeah, pretty much. <laughs> went to the Seven Eleven and <laughs> yeah. We actually, um, my dad's parents. I'm an only grandchild on my dad's side of the family, and they were like, "When are we supposed to give this kid presents if you're not going to oh. let us celebrate Christmas?" So we yeah. had our big holiday celebration on Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, well that's so, a good one. Yeah, so that's we put one. Christmas presents under the turkey and yeah, <laughs> but put them in the turkey. Yeah, totally. Oh, I got a diamond ring. <laughs> I'm choking on my gizzard. So yeah, <laughs> so I never listened to Christmas music as a kid really either. And so a few years ago, for the first time, I heard "Baby It's Cold Outside," and yeah, I'm I'm gonna go on record as saying I heard the lyrics and I was like, this is kind of rapey. Yeah. I'm really kind of not. Into I never this song. even imagined it that way until you pointed that out to me. So that just shows that I was caught up in the in the festive aura that is Christmas and wasn't really paying attention. But after you pointed that out to me, I was like, yeah, that's not good. That's not a good song. And I know a lot of people are saying, no, she really does want to say yes, but because it was like the 40s and the the mores were different and she was worried about her reputation being ruined. I'm like, you know what? Still F that song. Because either he's a rapist piece of crap or it's celebrating a time in which a woman wasn't able to say yes because she was worried about all sorts of bad things happening to her. So F this song either way. Like well, whichever, inter- whichever interpretation you believe in, whether he's a rapist creep or she is saying yes by saying no because she's allowing herself to be talked into it because she wants to say yes, but right. she can't. Whichever interpretation it is, it still sucks. I'm not going to be all F this about the song like you are. <laughs> but I will say that... Uh, the defense of, well, that's the way it was in those days, that it doesn't, doesn't wash anymore because... Slavery used to be a thing, too. Right. That's, you read my mind. <laughs> you read my mind. Like, in the 40s, you can imagine what it was like for black people and people of color. Right. Like, oh, that's just the way it was in those days. Like, what happens if it was like a, a horrible song about how people were treated in those days, black people around Christmas? And it, like, we right. don't do that anymore. We just, like, the society evolves. Right. So just because it was the way we did it in those days, that's not a, it was, you know, women didn't have a vote at a certain stage. And, and right. black people weren't citizens at a certain stage. We don't, it's like, well, it's just the way it was. Yeah, well, we've evolved. We're better than that now. Right. And we're going to be better, hopefully, in 40 years than we are today. I'm, so I'm kind of surprised that there's like the big uproar over this song. Well, like at I least on on my Facebook page, like maybe it's not a thing for everybody. Like maybe some people really don't care one way or the other, and I really don't care either. I mean, ban the song or don't ban the song, it doesn't matter to me. But I just I was very surprised that like all of my Facebook friends are putting up the memes like. Hey, kids, I'm pretty sure mommy consensually agreed to kiss Santa Claus, as a matter of fact. You know, like, I'm really kind of surprised that people are so with the pitchforks. It's it's reflective of our times. Yeah. It's definitely a reflection of our times. It's a reflection of the society that we're in. And I've also been a little bit stunned about the fact that, so baby, it's cold outside. All of a sudden, we're picking out this one Christmas song. And yet, how many misogynistic rap songs are there out there? Mm-hmm. Not saying all rap is misogynistic, but... There's a, there's a tendency to go there and and to 
where my, my point is, there's lots of other places where we could focus our attention rather than on a song that's going to be gone in three weeks anyway. Right, exactly. That Right, it gets played for, depending on how in the Christmas spirit you are, maybe six weeks out of the year tops, and then you don't listen to it again until Thanksgiving next year. Right, exactly. So. I know the CBC banned it, and then they stepped back off it, because, which is surprising for Canada, because usually Canada is very sensitive to everybody, and then it ends up watering a lot of things down. Mm-hmm. But in this case, they stepped back off and said, you know what, we, we took the feedback, and we're going to put it back on the air because we think, we think it's fine, or we think, mm-hmm. you know... Reflection of the time, whatever you, whatever reason they used, mm-hmm. um, but it's not, uh, it's not something that like there's so many Christmas songs out there. Just right. pick another one. And "Baby It's Cold Outside" is actually even not really not a really, Christmas song. It just has like, to do with cold weather, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which loops back to is Die Hard really a Christmas movie or it just takes place over Christmas? See, nope. it's a Christmas movie. See, see how I'm I'm putting two and two together. Here? <laughs> I'm working the channels. I don't care what Bruce Willis says. It's a Christmas movie. So Bruce Willis says it's not a Christmas movie. Well, apparently there's some speculation about whether he was joking or not. Oh. Yeah. He's also very grouchy, isn't he? Yeah. Generally? Yeah. So yeah. they don't know if maybe there was some sarcasm going on there. That's too bad cuz I really liked him in Moonlighting. I think he was great in Moonlighting. <laughs> Is there sarcasm going on no, here too? Yeah. No, that was actually a. I like that show, David something or other. Uh, Dave and Maddie, those were the characters. Yeah, right? Dave and Maddie were the yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he was good. That came on when I was like eight years old. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so, anything else we want to talk about on our special Christmas edition of the podcast? And it's Christmas; it's not holidays because. <laughs> We didn't do any Thanksgiving movies. We didn't do any Passover movies. Any Hanukkah movies. We didn't do any Boxing Day movies. Yeah. I, any Kwanzaa movies. Any New Year's Eve movies. Diwali. Any March Break movies. <laughs> well, that's oh, well, actually, there are March Break movies. Yeah. So No, I think so. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, I just like ringing the, the, the bells here. I really hope this isn't screwing up our sound on the podcast. No, I, I, I'm looking at the... V, actually, the engineer, the sound engineer, is giving me the <laughs> thumbs up through the glass. Oh, okay. So we're good. And when we start recording this visually, videotaping, I don't, when, uh. it's, when it's on video and you can see it on YouTube, you'll see the set that we have. You'll see the sound engineer booth. <laughs> You'll see the high-tech mics that we have in front of each of us. It's really going to be a glimpse behind the curtain. We do actually have a high-tech mic, so I'll give you that. One high-tech Okay, mic. Can, can you stop doing that? Oh, That's kind of annoying me. All right, sorry. sorry. <laughs> so for another edition of the podcast. For our final edition, officially, of 2018. Maybe, unless we do another one later today. Which I don't think we have anything to talk about. Oh, Okay. <laughs> That kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. We can find something. We'll talk about uh, our feelings and put that on the podcast. Oh, I bet that's going to get a lot of downloads. (laughs) It's going to get more than we have. It's (laughs) worth a shot. (laughs) yippee ki yay (laughs) (laughs) Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas for another edition of the podcast. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dodds.